We are now going to talk about the attribution of capital gains. Now guys, this section is similar to section 7. So thus, it applies if there was a donation and the donor is still alive. Okay, now please go and make sure that you see what is included and excluded from your syllabus as well, guys. If this section applies, remember we've looked at paragraph 80. Paragraph 80 says, if you have an asset or a capital gain and you give it to a beneficiary, then the beneficiary must be taxed. However, if there was a donation and the donor was still alive, then the donor may be taxed. So what I want you to see, I've made little crosses here, guys, when it's excluded from the syllabus. So some of these sections are excluded. Just be careful. So paragraph 68 is very similar to section 72 when it's a disposal to a spouse. But you won't be required to know paragraph 68 is excluded from the syllabus. Okay, so that's not important. The ones that are important to you are the following. Paragraph 69 which is similar to section 7.3 and section 7.4. Section 7.4 is excluded, but it also has to do with minor children across the nation. Now, so the idea is here. Okay, 2010. Mr. X donates a, an asset to the trust. Um, market value equals a million rands. 2015, the trustees decide to transfer the asset to child A, who is six years old, okay, and the market value equals 1.5 million rands. So this would be an application of paragraph 80. Paragraph 81 would say, you will say proceeds, 1.5 million rands. The child did not have a vested right in 2010, guys. That's why we're seeing it there. And base cost is a million rands. It will say there is a 500,000 rands capital gain. Now paragraph 81 will say that who should be taxed on this? The person who has received it, the vested right in it now. Because remember when the trustees decide to transfer the asset, the child gets a vested right. Now, paragraph 81 will say the child should be taxed on it. But if you go and look at paragraph 81, it told you it's subject to these paragraphs. So what will happen here is you'll say, okay, yes, child A should be taxed on it. However, child A is a minor. Thus, we apply paragraph 69, because this is a capital gain. And that then means that the Donor Mr. X will be taxed on the 500,000. So it's exactly the same concept as when you saw for income. Remember, remind you of income. If this asset produced income of 100,000 rands and they give it to the child, who will be taxed? The father or the parent. Okay, Mr. X, because it's a minor child. So that same section applies there. Paragraph 70 applies, which is the same as section 75. So if there's an amount, so for example, if in 2010, Mr. X donates an asset to the trust, in 2015, the trustees decide to sell the asset, right, that they decide to sell the asset, sell the asset, and no one has a vested right. If they do that, what will happen? They'll still calculate the capital gain, but because no one has a vested right, and there was a donor who was still alive, paragraph 70 will, be up, will apply, and Mr. X will be taxed on it. So it's exactly the same concept that we saw previously. Okay, please note also, guys, paragraph 72 has to do with non-residents, excluded from your syllabus. And then, guys, paragraph 73 it's just a section that's formally written into the Act that tells you, basically, for CDT, you should still apply the Volich principle. So, in other words, the donor can't be taxed more on, a, on the capital gain than the interest that they would have had. So, it says, where both an amount of income and capital are derived by reason of a donation, 
the total amount of that income and the gain that is deemed in terms of section 7 to be that of a person other than the one to whom it accrues, so the donor, and that is attributed in part to a person other than the one to whom it vests, shall not exceed the amount of the benefit derived from that donation settlement disposition. And what is the benefit that you derive from the donation settlement disposition? The interest that you would have earned. So for purpose of this paragraph, the benefit derived means the amount by which the person to whom the donation was made has benefited from the fact that it was made for no or inadequate consideration, including consideration in the form of interest. Right? So again, guys, it's the same type of concept there. Um, Mr. X sells an asset for 1 million rands to the trust on an interest-free loan. The official interest rate is 10%. Okay, um, at the end of the year, the trustees sell the asset for 1.3 million rands and distributes the capital gain to child A who is seven years old. Okay, so, Volich principle, slash paragraph 73, this is the interest foregone, the interest not charged, a million times 10%, and I assume that is now for the entire year, so 100,000 rands. Okay, so 100,000 rands is the maximum amount that Mr. X can be taxed, uh, taxed on. This asset was sold in my example, so I'm going to just show you. Proceeds 1.3 million, base cost 1 million, gives us 300,000 rands capital gain. Now, usually because this child is a minor, in terms of paragraph 69, the child, so I'm just reminding you, paragraph 69, in terms of paragraph 69, the child's father, Mr. X, should be taxed on that 300,000, right? But, now we say the maximum that they can be taxed on in terms of paragraph 69, because this is like section 7, is 100,000 rands. So, of that 300,000 rands, let me show it like this, 100,000 rands and 200,000 rands to break it up. The 100,000 rands will go, who will be taxed on that? Mr. X. The parent per paragraph 69 and the 200,000 rands will be taxed in the hands of child A, the minor, because of the Volich principle, paragraph 73. So remember why is this the case? It's because he sells it for a million rands on interest-free loan. Remember now, just as an example, if he did not sell it, if he donated the asset, fully donated the asset, then how much of the donation, what is the benefit of the donation? The full amount. If he had donated the asset, then Mr. A would have, or Mr. X, the parent, would have been taxed on that full 300,000 rands. So it's exactly the same principle as we saw under section 7. Okay, so this only applies if there was a sale and not enough interest was charged.